Today, we're going to be looking at this Dell T7810 Workstation Tower PC. This Dell workstation came out in 2013. When this machine was new, it had a starting price of around $2,000 and it could be configured up to $21,000. I, however, picked this thing up for only $130. Uh, this is not an average PC, it's actually a workstation and it's got some pretty unique features that I want to take advantage of. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at it, what it's capable of and uh, what I'm going to be doing to it. I think this machine has a lot of potential as a home server for a couple of applications that I'm interested in getting into. Let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware. Uh, first of all, I think this case actually looks pretty nice. Um, it's a pretty clean design. It kind of just looks like a jumbo sized Dell Optiplex in a way. It's pretty cool. Um, it's kind of a beast of a PC. It's almost 16 and a half inches tall, almost 18 and a half inches deep and a humble almost seven inches wide. Taking a look at the back here, we can see a couple of PCIe video cards and a Wi-Fi card. For the motherboard I.O., we have six USB ports, some PS2 ports, a VGA cord, and I'm guessing it's just some audio ports, and a one gigabit ethernet port. Now, what you may find interesting is there's not an HDMI port on the back on the motherboard or even on the video cards, and I'll be showing you all why that is in just a moment. Let's take a look at the inside. Now looking at the inside, you can probably already see why this PC is kind of special. We got dual CPU sockets right here, only one of which is populated, but we may be changing that in the future. With dual CPU slots comes eight slots of RAM, four of which are hidden by this, you know, air intake thing. But that allows us to put quite a few DIMMs in there, and this uh, system can do up to 512 gigabytes of RAM. Oh, and also, that's ECC RAM. The system is currently stocked with two uh, non-ECC DIMMs. I'm not sure why they weren't ECC DIMMs in there already, but uh, I will be replacing that. I'll keep the CPU a mystery for now. We'll be checking that out once we log into Windows and run some benchmarks. For the PCIe slots, we got four PCIe X16 looking slots. According to the uh, Dell spec sheet, only two of these are actually X16, and I'm assuming it's the ones with the clips. The other two are probably X8, uh, could be X4. We have this little one here, which I believe that one's X4. And then down at the bottom, we actually have a PCI slot for older hardware, not even PCI Express. Oh, and check this out. There's a internal USB port. That's cool. Anyways, here's the two video cards. We got an NVIDIA. Oh, it'll focus eventually. NVIDIA NVS310. Pretty much just some extra video cores. This thing is not capable of very much. And then we do have a NVIDIA Quadro P400, something a little bit more capable than that NVS. And then we have this little uh, Archer uh, Wi-Fi card. I think it's Wi-Fi 6E. I probably will not be using this at all, but it was in there. You know, maybe it has a use in another computer. All right, let's log into this thing and run some benchmarks. Yep, it's easier going on. This system was not a top-of-the-line system. 
it only has a Xeon E5 2603 V4 clocked at 1.7 gigahertz. I don't know what the boost clock on this thing is, but it cannot be that high. Um, I believe this is only a 6 core CPU as well. And you can see we got 16 gigs of RAM in there. Alright, I ran a benchmark on Geekbench 6, and we'll just use these results to compare to the new CPU once it comes in in a couple days. I'm not even going to worry about benchmarking the video cards. They're not really worth comparing anything to. And we'll be back once the parts are in. Okay, we're back. Got some stuff in the mail. Apologize for the, the awful top-down lighting. I waited too long uh, today, and the sun went down. So no natural lighting. I don't have any other way to light stuff, so... There we go. We got um, an Intel Xeon E5 2690 V4 right here, so we did get the right CPU, thank god. I don't know if that's going to focus, sorry. Take my word for it. You'll see it on the computer once we got it on. So we got four sticks of DDR4. ECC RAM. I ordered, I think, Super Micro RAM. Guys said they were out and asked if Hynix would be good. SK Hynix. I said, I don't care. As long as they work. So hopefully they work. Let's put it inside of the PC. So, a little recap, we went from a E5, a Xeon E5 2603V4 to a Xeon E5 2690V4. Uh, that's, I think this is a 6 core, 1.7 gigahertz, no boost clock CPU to a 14 core, 28 thread, I believe this one is 12 threads. Um, CPU, I think, if I remember correctly, it has a base clock of like 2.6 and a boost clock of 3. 3, maybe 3.5, so a whole lot faster, a whole lot more cores, and a good bit more power draw, but that's okay. It, it's going to be awesome. Uh, and then we added 32 gigabytes of RAM for sticks of 8. Not a ton of RAM to start, but I want to leave this build to be easily upgradable in the future. I can fill out these slots with some more 8 gigabyte DIMMs, and then I can upgrade the full system if I need more RAM for, I don't know, AI or whatever else. Alright, let's go ahead and check out how well it's running. Alright, moment of truth. Turning it on in 3, 2, 1. Okay, different RAM sticks in the uh, main slots. Let's see. Let's see if we got dead RAM messing this thing up. Oh, there we go. Okay. Ram. We got some ram issues going on here. <clears throat> may have to be may have to talk to an eBay seller in a bit, but for now, we got a boot. Okay, no, that that card works too. Okay. All right, I'm going to set up a keyboard and mouse and we'll go ahead and uh, run some benchmark. Okay. It is done. On the left here, we have the E, we have the 2690V4 with a single core of 1058, which by the way on the, on the right here we have the previous one, so an increase of about 450, almost doubling the single core score, that is awesome. Multi-core score, it gets even crazier, it's almost, is that quadruple, it's almost tripled, or it's about tripled the multi-core score because we're getting from what 6 to 14 but it's just more efficient uh, each core is faster so the multi-core score is even higher than just double <clears throat> and 
And then over here, uh, for comparison, this is my current server uh, with a i5-7400 with uh, only 1245, so this is pretty close, only about a 200, uh, 200 lower score, and then more than double, once again, multi-core score. So th this system will be a lot better than my current system is at multitasking and running multiple things like VMs or, you know, whatever else. All right, we're on Cinebench now. I'm gonna run a single and multi-core benchmark and we'll take a look at those scores. And then I guess I'll go into like a conclusion or something. I don't really know how to end the video. <laughs> All right, single core is finished. A score of 683. Um, let's do multi-core. 44 points. Not the best. I mean, here it's comparing it to some thread rippers and such, so those are a little bit better, I'm sure. Uh, regardless, though, I didn't get this for its single-core performance. It's I did get it, actually, because it has better single-core performance than other Xeons, but that wasn't the selling point here. Thanks for watching to the end of the video, guys. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you for watching all the way through. Leave a comment if you have any advice for how I should improve my videos or what I should do in the next video. But yeah, thank you for watching. See ya.